Thank you for viewing this educational presentation. This module discusses a treatment for kidney stones called shockwave lithotripsy. Kidney stones, or renal calculi, form in the urine when certain chemicals are in high concentration. These particles form crystals, and the crystals accumulate together to form stones. Stones initially form in the drainage system within the kidney itself, but may then drop down into the drainage tube, or ureter, on their way to the bladder. If the stones block this tube, they then cause severe pain or renal colic as the kidney suddenly swells from the back pressure of urine. Other stones may simply roll around in the kidney and cause a nagging intermittent back pain. Still others may only be detected when a urine test is done showing blood in the urine. This drawing shows a kidney, the drainage system of the kidney, and the ureter or urine tube draining down to the bladder. Stone number one in this figure is stuck in the ureter and would likely be treated with stenting and or ureteroscopy, meaning removal of the stone through a small telescope passed up the urinary tract. Stone number two is a large stone in the kidney, which would likely require surgical removal through a small scope inserted through the flank into the kidney, also known as a percutaneous nephrolithotomy, or PNL. Stone number three is a smaller stone in the kidney, which is typically treated with lithotripsy. As indicated on the previous slide, there are many different ways to treat kidney stones, and the choice of treatment will depend upon the situation. When stones present with sudden pain or renal colic, you may require urgent treatment with stenting to relieve the obstruction, or your doctor may choose to remove the stone using a small telescope or ureteroscope with the aid of a basket or laser. In some cases when stones are small, you may be given medication to help pass it on your own. These treatments are dealt with in more detail in separate presentations. Very large stones are typically treated by inserting a telescope through the skin of the flank directly into the kidney and using various instruments to break up and remove the stone. This is called, as noted previously, a percutaneous nephrolithotomy, or PNL. When obstruction has been relieved, or if the patient is very stable, a stone in the kidney or in the ureter can be treated on a more elective or non-urgent basis. Rarely the stone can be dissolved with medication, but this is certainly the exception to the rule. Other stones can be treated electively with ureteroscopy, as noted previously. Finally, one of the most effective means of treating stones in a stable patient is a procedure called lithotripsy. Lithotripsy involves the use of high-energy shock waves to break up and fragment kidney stones. Shock waves are generated in a number of different ways. In a typical machine, a large spark plug is used to create shocks that travel through a fluid medium. These individual shock waves spread out and then are focused or targeted on a selected kidney stone. Individual shock waves traveling through the body to the stone do not cause any damage to the body. Targeting of kidney stones for lithotripsy is done with the assistance of X-ray or ultrasound. Eventually, the shock waves meet together at their target, the kidney stone. The stone absorbs the accumulated energy of the shock waves, and this energy breaks the stone apart. In most cases, the stone is broken down into tiny pieces, and each of these passes harmlessly through the body in the urine flow. This figure shows a typical modern-day lithotripsy machine. Above the table, over the patient, is the x-ray tube used to target the stone. Below the table is what is called the shock head, where the shock waves are generated and focused. The patient lies on the table, either on their back or their stomach, and the shock head is brought up against the patient's side at the start of treatment. This is just one example of a lithotripsy machine. The machine used to treat you may look quite different. Lithotripsy can be used to treat most stones in the kidney and the ureter. As a general rule, lithotripsy is an elective or non-urgent procedure used to treat stones in patients who are not in severe pain and who have no infection. In certain situations, lithotripsy may be ineffective or unsafe. For very large stones, lithotripsy may be unable to effectively completely break up the stone, and multiple treatments may be required, which may still be unsuccessful. Furthermore, after treatment of very large stones, there may be too many fragments to successfully pass down into the bladder. Some stones pass out of the kidney and get stuck in the ureter, causing obstruction of the urine flow down the tube. This can cause severe pain or infection, 
and this obstruction should be relieved before treatment with lithotripsy. Some medical conditions require caution with lithotripsy. Patients with large aneurysms or dilated arteries in the abdomen may not be candidates for lithotripsy. Patients with pacemakers may require special attention for lithotripsy as well. Finally, patients with active infection should alert their physician prior to treatment. Pregnant women must not undergo lithotripsy. Most lithotripsy machines have a weight limit of about 300 pounds. Patients nearing or exceeding this weight may not be offered treatment as the table may not function properly and the stone will be very difficult to target. Finally, lithotripsy may cause some minor bleeding in any patient. Patients on blood thinners or with bleeding problems are therefore at risk for more extensive bleeding and cannot undergo lithotripsy without first having their underlying condition treated or their medication reversed. Success rates following lithotripsy for kidney stones are generally in the neighborhood of 80%, but vary according to the machine used, the technique, and many other factors. When lithotripsy does fail, it is usually worth another try, as repeat treatment may still be successful. As noted earlier, very large stones may not be successfully treated with lithotripsy. Other causes of treatment failure include certain stones that have a very hard composition and any condition resulting in difficulty seeing or targeting the stone. These include the stones themselves being very faint or not visible on x-ray, large body structure making it difficult to get the shock head in just the right position, difficulty positioning on the table, such as patients with spinal deformities, and patient movement on the table during treatment. Generally, lithotripsy is a very safe and effective treatment. The most common things for a patient to experience following treatment is some blood passing in the urine, or some bruising in the flank where the shock head was. These are common and will resolve quickly. Occasionally, fragments of a stone may logjam in the ureter as they pass, causing sudden obstruction of the urine flow, resulting in sudden severe pain or colic. If this happens, you should call your doctor or go to the emergency room. When the urine or stone is infected before treatment, the treatment can sometimes stir up that infection and worsen it, even seeding infection into the bloodstream. For this reason, your doctor will be sure that you do not have an active infection prior to treatment. If you have any symptoms of infection, such as burning with urination or fever, you should notify the medical staff ahead of time. More serious complications include internal bleeding or a collection of blood around the kidney, both of which are very uncommon. Before your treatment session, you will already have seen your urologist in consultation, and appropriate x-rays and lab work will have been done. Please be sure that your doctor has your appropriate x-rays or other imaging. As mentioned, if there is any indication of infection, this should have been treated already. Finally, you may be advised about certain dietary rules to follow prior to your treatment date. The purpose of these is to limit the amount of gas in the bowels, which can obscure the view of the stone. Typical recommendations are to avoid things like cabbage, beans, broccoli, and soda pop. You should eat a regular lunch the day before treatment and have a light supper only, avoiding meat, fish, or poultry. If your treatment is in the afternoon, you may have a light breakfast, such as toast or juice, that morning, but stop taking anything by mouth three hours prior to your appointment. These dietary restrictions will vary according to where you are having your treatment. Most of your normal prescription medications can be taken prior to treatment. Certain very important exceptions to this should be noted, and if you are on any of these, please advise your doctor. The most important medication to be cautious of is warfarin or Coumadin, which is a blood thinner. This medication must be stopped or reversed prior to lithotripsy. However, this should never be done without first discussing it with your doctor. You should also check with your doctor about when to resume this medication following treatment. There are several other medications which can worsen bleeding following lithotripsy, including aspirin or entrophin, along with Plavix and Persantine. Some arthritis medications may also require caution. These drugs should be stopped one to two weeks prior to your treatment, but again, if you have any questions about this, please discuss it with your doctor or the hospital staff. On the day of your treatment, please arrive well ahead of your scheduled appointment time, preferably one hour. If any changes to your medical condition have occurred, please advise the medical staff at the lithotripsy unit. Finally, you should have a ride home arranged in case you need to have medication to help you through the treatment.
please review the following checklist prior to your lithotripsy session. Be sure that you have followed the pretreatment advice regarding your diet and medications. Notify the lithotripsy unit well ahead of time if you think there may be any chance of you being pregnant or if any other significant health concerns have arisen. Bring your health card or insurance information. Be sure also to bring your up-to-date medication list. Once again, your ride home should be arranged and standing by. And finally, check with the lithotripsy unit to see if you are able to listen to music during the treatment, as many centers do offer this, and it can help ease you through the treatment more comfortably. On the day of treatment, you may first have an intravenous or IV line started. This is for the delivery of drugs which may be required to make the procedure more comfortable for you. In some centers, these drugs are optional, while in others, their use is routine, and they may even be given by an anesthesiologist. You will then be positioned on the lithotripsy table, and the table and x-ray unit will move to target the stone. Next, the shock head is brought up against your side. The shock head may have lubricating jelly on it and may feel a bit cold at first. Once the shock head is in place and the stone is targeted, treatment begins, and you'll hear a loud clicking sound and feel a tapping against your side. In some centers, sedative medication and painkillers are given prior to treatment, and in other centers, they are only offered later on if you become uncomfortable. These medications help you to keep still on the table, which may make the treatment more successful. Following treatment, you may be monitored for an hour or so before going home especially if you received IV medications. If your doctor feels as though it may be necessary, you may be given a prescription for a painkiller. Minor flank bruising and ache are normal, and usually this can be controlled with extra-strength acetaminophen or Tylenol or ibuprofen. Some blood in the urine, as well as increased frequency and urgency of urination, is also common and should settle within a few days. It is helpful to increase fluid intake following lithotripsy to help your stones pass and to clear these symptoms. This is also an important habit to get into lifelong to help prevent future stones. You are cautioned to contact your doctor or go to your local emergency room if any of the following develop after lithotripsy. Severe or unrelenting pain which cannot be settled with over-the-counter medications or pills prescribed by your doctor. Signs of infection such as severe chills or high temperature. Persistent nausea and vomiting and ongoing heavy bleeding with passage of clots. Following lithotripsy, it may take a few days for your stone fragments to begin passing. During this time, you should push fluids to assist with stone clearance, and you may also need to use postural drainage techniques if recommended by your urologist. You are asked to use the strainer provided to collect the fragments every time you void until you have a good collection of stones to analyze. Allow the stones to dry, then bring them to your follow-up visit in the specimen container provided. Fragments from stones in the lower part of the kidney, as shown here, settle and may not pass easily because of the effect of gravity. To help these fragments clear, special techniques called postural drainage have been developed, and these may be recommended by your doctor. This is a sample postural drainage program, and you may be given slightly different instructions from your unit. Begin the day after your procedure and repeat for one week. Drink two 8-ounce glasses of water, then wait 30 minutes. Lie on a slanted surface, about 30 degrees as shown here, on your stomach with your head at the lower end. You may try propping an ironing board up on a chair to do this. Slap firmly, but not hard enough to cause pain, with a cupped hand over the area of the kidney. You may ask someone else to do this for you. Do this 10 or 15 times and repeat this twice more, doing each set 5 minutes apart. Now turn and lie on the untreated side and repeat this procedure. Get up slowly and drink another couple glasses of water. After lithotripsy, you should be able to resume normal activities in 1 to 2 days, and you should follow up with your doctor in a few weeks or so, depending on his or her preference. Please bring your stone fragments to your follow-up appointment so that they can be analyzed. With any luck at that point, you will receive the good news that you are now stone-free. As discussed, kidney stones or renal calculi can be very painful and in some cases cause further damage to the urinary tract. Kidney stones can be treated through a number of different approaches. Shockwave lithotripsy, a procedure which fragments kidney stones, 
using high-energy shock waves is one of several treatment options. Although complications are possible, as with any procedure, lithotripsy remains a safe and highly effective way to treat kidney stones. This slide lists some of the many resources available where you can find more information about shockwave lithotripsy. These current references were used to assist in the preparation of this module. All of these are available through your local medical library or the internet if you are interested in more detailed reading on this subject. Thank you again for viewing this presentation. Talk to your doctor if you would like to learn more about your condition.